uh, second segment, we will be previewing the game between France and Spain. Very interesting game coming up. Uh, as this game will kick off tomorrow, a game between two teams that came in with high expectations, but both have performed much differently. Um, Spain have came in and completely meet expectations and have succeeded expectations, not only in the way that they've played, but how they have dominated, how they have been flexible in terms of winning in different ways, in terms of winning against different sort of styles, in terms of showing their ability to be clinical, to, you know, against Germany, they showed that they could be under pressure and still survive a game. Uh, against Croatia, they showed that they could dominate the game despite not having the majority of possession. They've shown that they can, they can completely take over possession of the game and completely outpass and outplay a team in the way that they showed against Italy. They showed that they can go goal down and still come back, which what they showed against Georgia. Just been a complete tournament from them. In my opinion, they've been absolutely, absolutely brilliant this entire tournament. And then on the opposite side, you have a France team that's looked very shaky in the fact that the goals have not been there. They haven't scored a single open goal this entire tournament that came from a French player. Besides an own goal, they haven't scored a single open goal this entire tournament. You know, um... It has not been good enough in terms of the attacking end. They've defended very, very well. They've defended brilliantly. But the strengths of French teams in the back, in the past, under the Shams, has been defend brilliantly. Don't give up any goals. And when you have your opportunities to play in counter, to play in transition, take advantage of the pace and quality amongst the players in the attack, in transition. But they have not done that. They have not done that. They've been very, very shaky. Um, they have not created much opportunities. Kylian Mbappe, he has been nowhere near it. He's been completely off it. Antoine Griezmann, he's been off it as well. Um, having some chances, especially earlier on in the tournament, not doing well with them. Usman Dembele, he has, his end product has been abysmal, despite good general play at this European Championship. Duram has been off it as well. The in general, the French attack has been way off it this European Championship and it's been very very alarming but they're still here they're here the French away they got here after you know an, a, a, a deflected um, own goal against Belgium late in the game and then you know they took advantage of Portugal's in penalties to reach the semi-final and it seems like there's a price that they that they need to pay, kind of like England, and, sorry about that, but, you know, and if there's any team that will make them pay that price, will be the Spanish, will be a Spain national team, they have the players, they have the quality, they've been performing like a team that really has the ability to make a team that's been very concerning pay and it'll be interesting to see if they can get it done it'll be very very difficult I think Spain need to be alarmed in the fact that there is a lot of quality in transition that France could take advantage of. There will be plenty of quality in transition that France can take advantage of. Um, that they can make Spain, that f uh, that they can make Spain pay, um, especially if Spain do dominate possession, like the French want them to do, like the French will invite them to do. And f you know, Spain get comfortable with that possession and start pushing guys forward. And leave space in behind, in behind the Spanish back line. 
you know, there is pace and ability amongst this French attack with the likes of Dembele and Mbappe to really make the Spanish backline pay. And Luis De La Fuente needs to be clear, clever in the way that they attack France and don't leave too much space in the back. They cannot do that. Uh, that's a good, that's an interesting tactical part of the game that I'm looking forward to. And as far as France, you know, how long can they really sit back and observe the pressure and allow Spain to dominate and allow Spain... How can they allow Spain to have possession but also limit their ability to create chances? Because Spain are going to come in and they're going to have possession as France will be fine with them doing. But... How does France make sure with all the possessions Spain have that they don't allow them to make good chances out of it? How does France allow that to happen? Um, very interesting. Very interesting to see that point of view too. Um, for me, it is. Out of the two semifinals, I think this is the one with the most quality. In my opinion, um, particularly not even close, honestly. Um, big, big talking point, Spain. They have, uh, they have had a, uh, a few players that will probably not going to be available in this game. You know, with Carvajal getting the yellow card uh suspension he ended up getting a red card at the end of the game but he really got that red card because he knew he was going to be suspended for that next game Pedri he went out injured in that game as well um and then um and uh, um and uh I believe I believe there was another Suspension. I forgot. Oh, uh, uh, Lenormand. Lenormand. He's not gonna be available as well. Um. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Um. It's probably gonna be a Navas, Nacho, Laporte, Cucurella back line, which is definitely not. I believe out of the opening game against Croatia. Only one of those players, Kukurea, wasn't it? Carvajal, um, Dino, Di, Lenormand, and um, the second center back was, I believe, in that opening game against Croatia. I have no idea, actually. Let me go back and check real quick. Who was the second center back in that opening game? It was Nacho. Oh, yeah, Nacho was starting in that. So it was Nacho and Kukurea, but Lenormand and Carvajal, they are not going to be starting. And then I believe Danny Olmo, you bring him in midfield, which really I think he gives you a little bit something different. I don't think it's necessarily any any um a downgrade from Pedri. Um, Danny Olmo has been big for Spain in major international tournaments in the past. And I think he has more of a... Or I know he has more of a capacity to get a goal, to make a run into the box and get a goal. He has that ability from midfield. So does Fabian Ruiz to an extent. Goal scoring is not an issue from the Span team. The way it is for France. But uh, yeah. Um, last time France played Spain in a major international competition, a competitive match, it was that Nations League final that France were able to get the best of Spain. But, um, but, um, you know, it's different now. Um, Saliba, Saliba he's going to be very, very important in this game. Saliba and Upamecano, um, Upamecano in terms of not making a mistake. Saliba in terms of handling Morata and providing protection for, um, for, uh, uh for um he's getting he's mistaking me in my um, um for Tio Hernandez yeah for Tio Hernandez going up against Lamin Yamal uh especially if Tio Hernandez does bomb up the field you know he might get there might be a few moments that Saliba gets isolated 
as well as Umpe Meccano with Nico Williams. I think those are the matchups that Spain could really take advantage of that French back line. If they can get some of their versatile wingers isolated against some of the French um, center backs, they could really, really, really take advantage of that and really make them pay. So that will be very interesting. That's something I'm looking very forward to. I want to see. I want. I'm also interested to see. Does Spain really, really, extremely dominate the possession? Do France allow Spain to really have huge control of possession, like Spain is capable of doing, um, or does France take a different approach approach to it and they try to take a little bit more of a progressive approach? I'm interested to see that as well. I think it does come if France does get a breakthrough early. I think we'll see a very defensive display from Deschamps in the, in, in the French crew. But I think if you know, the game stays 0-0, I think they will take more of an initiative in the game because they don't really want to get pinned in and it takes one deflection or one opportunity to really, you know, to really get the... Um, to cause major major trouble for Spain and that will be very very dangerous 